Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial where we are going to make a palette limiting shader and also be able to drag and drop in hex files from low spec here and you can go and find any palette you like and you download the hex file here and then drag and drop these hex files to the game window and try out the different palettes and see what our game is going to look like once you have dragged in the palette you can toggle the palette on and off to compare the difference all right let's get started I created a new Godot project and called it Palette Limiting Shader here. And first up, click on 2D Scene, rename this guy to Main, then go to Scene, Save Scene, click Create Folder and call this Scenes, click on OK and click Save. You're going to right click the Main node, click on Add Shell node, find the Sprite 2D and click on Create. Then press Ctrl D to duplicate, rename the first guy to Game Mockup. And the other sprite RGB colors, like so. And for the mockup, we're gonna go to Open Game Art and click on Browse, 2D Art, and we can search for background in here and click on Search. Click on the Castle Platformer. I'm gonna use this guy as a background. We can right click this guy, open image in new tab, right click this image and click on Save Image As. And I'm going to save this image in its own folder for the project. So create a new folder and call it Assets. And then create the mockup folder in here. Rename the file here to GameMockup.png and click on Save. Let's go back to the Godot editor, locate the GameMockup.png file and drag and drop it up to the Game Mockup sprite. Then remove Offset Centered for the RGB colors and the Game Mockup. We can enable the grid and drag this guy down here to take the whole screen. Then for the RGB colors, I created this image myself. So I'm going to open up the mockup folder in the file manager. I'm going to paste this guy in here and drag this guy in to the RGB colors as well. Like so. So we have a grayscale down here and we have all the colors in a line and those in a circle. All right. Press control as to save. Next, click on Scene, New Scene, click on 2D Scene, and this is going to be a 2D sprite as well. You can right click this guy, click on Change Type, type in Sprite, find the Sprite 2D, and click on Change. And for this guy, we're just going to drag in the icon.svg file to the node. You can click this guy, Offset, Remove Centered. And for this to work properly, the corners on the sprite that are transparent need to be outside of the screen. Like so. Next, rename the node to palette limiting shader. Then we need to go to material, click on the material here, click on new shader material, click here again, click on shader, a new shader, and click on the folder, go to assets, click on create folder, and call this shaders, press enter, and save this guy in here as palette limiting GD shader, press enter, and click on create. Next, click here to open up the shader. Make this a bit bigger. Then first at the top, we're going to add the sample 2D screen texture. We're going to have a vector 4 array with 1024 colors. And for pixel art, this should be more than enough. Usually palettes only contains up to 256 colors, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to use 1024 colors. Then we have a uniform int to store the number of colors we have in the palette. We are not going to use the vertex function, so we can delete this guy. But inside of the fragment function, we're going to get the color for the current pixel by calling texture LOD. We pass in the screen texture, the screen UV, and 0.0, .0 for the level of detail. Then we can add a variable to store the minimum color difference and initialize this with a high value. Our next variable is going to be the closest color, and we initialize this guy to be completely black. Next, we're going to loop through all the num colors we have in the palette. This guy up here. Then inside of the loop, we're going to get the color distance from the current color in the array with the color of the pixel that is currently being processed inside of the fragment function. Then we're going to check if the color distance is less than the min color difference. And if this is true, we're going to update the min color difference to be the current color distance. Then we're going to set the closest color to be the closest color we have found so far inside of the colors array. And finally, when we have found the closest color, we're going to set the color RGB here to be the closest color we found in the palette. 
we can delete the light function as well. You're not gonna need it. So press Ctrl S to save. We can go up a folder, go to assets, shaders, and save this as palette limiting shader.tsen. Click on save. Now we're gonna write the C sharp script so we can drag and drop in the hex files and load them into the shader. So right click on the palette limiting shader node, click on attach script, make sure it's a C sharp script, rename this to C sharp standard, and click on create. Then at the top, we're first going to add two variables. One is gonna be the shader material, and the second one is gonna be a constant int for the maximum number of colors we can have in a palette. Then in the render method, we're going to get the material as shader material. Next, we're going to write the method so we can add the colors to the shader that we are loading in from a palette. We're going to type in private void, call this add colors to shader. And this is going to take in a string array. And we're going to call it lines. And first of all, we're going to have an int num colors in hex file. And this guy is going to take the number of lines and count them. And we're going to add minus one and this is because counting starts at zero next we're going to have a list with the built-in color clause we're going to call this colors the new list color here next we're going to check if the lines dot count is larger or equals to the maximum number of palette colors and we're going to say plus one because the loss character is going to be a new line at the end of the file if this is the case we're going to print out an error here and return out of the method. Then we're going to loop through all the lines in the hex file and I'm going to show you what a hex file looks like right now. So here we have the Aurora hex file and as you can see all the colors here are simply color codes in hexadecimal format here. And to make sure we don't read in any crazy stuff we're going to make sure that the line is not null or empty. If that's the case we're just going to go to the next line. Then we're going to create a new color on the line that we are reading in and once we have read in the color we're going to add the new color to the colors list. And once we have looped through all of the lines, we're then going to call the shader material and we're going to set the shader parameter colors here. So if you have a look in the Godot editor and we open up the material, we have the shader parameters here. And if I hover here, you can see the shader underscore parameter forward slash colors, which is exactly what we have here. So this is how we access the colors on the shader material. Then we pass in the colors and we convert them to an array because that is what it's expecting to fill in here. We have an array of them, and it's gonna be a packed flow32 array. Then we can go back to the code. Next, we're gonna pass in the number of colors as well to the shader material. We pass in the num colors in hex file, which is simply all the lines minus one in the file. Then once this is done, we can now make this node to be visible. Now, we're gonna add a functionality to drop files to our window so we can read in the hex files. And if we have a look in the Goda documentation, we can see that we have the own files dropped here, which is a signal that is emitted when files are dragged from the OS file manager and dropped in the game window. So we can minimize. And to do this is really simple. So just underneath the render method, we're gonna add the method connect files drop signal. And here we simply get the root, and then we call root.files dropped. And this is a new way in Go.4 to connect to a signal. We go plus equals on files dropped. Now we need to implement this method. So when we are dragging and dropping a file onto the window, we got to do something with it. And as we can see in the documentation, we are going to get a list of files. So just underneath here, we're going to add a method on files drop. But right now we want to make sure that the file that is dropped is actually a hex file and not some weird file like a PNG or whatever. So we don't try to start parsing a file that has the wrong format. So for this, we're going to create the simple method called is file hex color and what we are going to look for is the dot hex file extension right now this has not been added so quick fix using system.io so we're going to go path dot get the extension and pass in the file name and i'm going to check if it equals dot hex in the end and if that is so we're going to return true otherwise we're going to return false so we can now check if the file we are trying to load is actually a hex file so here in the own file stop method we're going to check if the file is a hex color file and if that is true we're going to read all the text in the file and we are only going to take the first file all right next we're going to split the string on a new line and for this we're going to create a new string array and call it lines and we're going to split the text that we read in from the file and we're going to go new string 
and we're going to look for backslash r backslash n or backslash r or backslash n and if one of these conditions is true it's going to split that string and store it inside of the lines here and now that we have an array of all the lines with all the colors we can now call the add colors to shader method we created earlier down here all right so now that we have this in place we can now minimize and we can press Control s to save the palette limiting shader we're going to go to the main node right click the main node click on instantiate shell scene and add the palette limiting shader or tc and file here and we're going to make this hidden back to the code now what we're going to do is just take the connect files drop signal and add it to the render method here like so we can minimize and click on play and we can now drag and drop dot hex files into our game window and we can drag in whatever palette we like and see the difference but now we want to have a checkbox up here so we can actually toggle and compare the results so just right click the main node click on that child node and find the checkbox and click on create and we're going to rename this guy to be apply palette checkbox so we can right click the main node click on the touch script and save this as main.cs here with a capital m and click on create and at the top Gonna type in private and we're gonna add the palette limiting shader and call this palette limiting shader and this guy is simply gonna get the node it's gonna have the type palette limiting shader and we're gonna get the node palette limiting shader on the node tree press control s to save back to the go.editor now we can click on this guy and go to node then double click on the toggle signal connect it to the main script rename this to c sharp standard Select the text, right click and copy, and click on connect. We can delete the process method and type in private void paste the method in. And this takes in the boolean toggled. And all we have to do here is check if it's toggled. If that is the case, we're going to set the visibility of the palette limiting shader to be visible. Otherwise, it's going to be false, like so. So press Ctrl S to save. And now we're going to go to the palette limiting shader as well. And inside of the on files drop method, we're going to get the apply palette checkbox. And we're going to go and get it from the owner. And the owner is very simple. It's going to be the root node, which the node is attached to. And in our case, it's going to be the main node. So we go to the main node. We're going to get the node. And this guy is going to be a checkbox. And we can grab the name from the go to the editor. Just double click the node. Press control C escape go back to the code and paste it in like so so now we have access to the plat checkbox we're going to set this visibility to be true we're going to set the button pressed to be true as well all right so now if we minimize we can go here to the inspector and set the text to be apply palette and press ctrl s to save and if you now click on play and try some of the palettes we can now compare by checking the checkbox on and off. All right, this concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.